Winning an Olympic Games at home really does, it, it's a different feeling to winning it anywhere else. And I didn't know what that was going to be like. We thought we'd prepared for everything. The moment I realised that things were going to be different, that it was just a massive feat to win a gold medal in my home country, my home state, was when I walked out of her bathroom, she was standing right there at the door, and I walked out and she looked up at me and she went, I'm never going to wash my bathroom again! <laughs> I went, yes, I'm famous! <laughs> But it all came to a big halt, and I'll never forget this. I was on the right-hand side of the court. Here's the net. And I was at the national championships, and I was about to smash this ball down the line. And at the last moment, these two big hands came over the net, and they blocked that ball out. And as that ball landed, I landed, and I twisted. I completely ruptured my cruciate ligament. I completely ruptured my medial ligament. I wrecked all my meniscus and cartilage in one landing. It's like a village, they call it a village because it's got everything in there that you need. All the facilities that you need and then people walking down the streets in this village and in the food halls with names on their track suits, names on their back that you've never even heard of. These strange countries and you're like, where's that country? I don't even know how to say it, let alone know where it is. Hundreds of them. And you see in the food hall, you see the weightlifters come in with their you know, two plates of, uh, two trays of, you know, plates of meat and potatoes and all the breads and everything because they're just all stacking on weight. And then you see the gymnasts with their little tray and one plate of salad. <laughs> Have a think about who is in your team right now. Who is in your immediate surrounding? Who is in your business? Who are you in a relationship with? Who are you sitting next to? Are these people the people that are going to help you get to where you really want to go? Are these people going to support you and be there and fight for you and be positive and uplift you and empower you to reach your dreams? Are they? Because perhaps you need to make some changes, perhaps. And if they are fantastic, you're in the right place. If they're not, get them off the bus, get the right people on the bus so you can get to your destination. But in the lead up to that tournament, Summer and I absolutely couldn't stand each other. You know, here's two, again, two individuals that have worked so hard under so much pressure, but stayed together because we had this common goal. We wanted to go to the Olympics. When we arrived in Spain to play this tournament, we could barely talk to each other or be in each other's company. And I'm like, oh my God, how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to get out there and win these games that we need to win to qualify? Sometimes we have this plan, we have this grand vision of where we want to go and we set out a plan but we don't really know if it's going to work or not, we don't really know if those are the steps, we might not even know what the steps are. You just have this vision but what I'm saying to you is that is okay. If you're not really sure of the exact steps just put something down and get moving. Because when I got to that, after I, I just tried to ride a bike, when I got to that I went, oh my gosh, what was I thinking, I'm nowhere near that, I'll just skip it and go to the next one. And that's okay, because what was written on this ball wasn't set in stone. You know, when you set your goals and you make your plans, it's not set in stone. You're flexible enough to change it. Our success coach had us write our top three goals on a little piece of paper. He had them laminated and we put them in our wallet. Because every day you go to the wallet, go to your wallet, and while you're handing over your credit card or you, you're waiting for change, you just pull it out and have a look. It's about creating that vision and reminding yourself each day. Because we're so busy, aren't we? We've got those spinning plates that Scott was talking about. We've got lots of spinning plates going on, and we're trying to like juggle everything. And sometimes our goals and dreams, we just forget about them because we're doing the day-to-day -day stuff.
We had the biggest and best opportunity in the semi-final in the Atlanta Games to move through to the gold medal match against the Brazilian team that we had beaten many, many times. However, in the lead up to this match, what do you think we were thinking? Don't lose, don't lose. We were trying not to lose. How many times have you gone into a meeting thinking of all the worst case scenarios, or you're preparing for something, or even setting your goals for the year saying, oh no, I can't do that because this might happen. You've got to get that negative thought, the negative mindset out of your head in order to move forward because we went into that match completely afraid of losing and we got, we not only lost, we got absolutely thrashed by this team in 20 minutes. I threw it out to the crowd the other day and someone, this guy went, no! <laughs> and I went, what's wrong? He goes, I just broke three ribs. But it's not a hard ball, so. But that's pretty cool. So that's a massive part of my journey that I wanted, wanted to share with you. And obviously, as you know, um, Natalie and I did make it through to our first Olympic Games in 1996. We stuffed up the semi-final, but we managed to come through the next day. And it was... He pulls out the glass one day, after about a year or so working with us, he pulls out this glass and said, now we're going to walk on broken glass. We went, oh no, we need our feet. And I can tell you our federation, they wouldn't have funded us, even if we asked for it, but uh, if we needed it. But he worked for us for nothing. Um, but this was our A team. This is the team that we felt. And sometimes the people in your environment, like I said before, they're not the people you need. You need to go elsewhere to find out things. And be, be prepared to step out of the box maybe out of your industry, another industry, industry perhaps to be mentored or coached by somebody. Um, and also be prepared to take a risk. We took a risk having these people on board, but hey, the risk pretty much paid off. And we called ourselves the dream machine because it was our dream to turn our bronze into gold. And we were a machine. Without one of these people in our team, we wouldn't have done it. Probably look down. You have to look where you go. Yeah, go look down. <laughs> you have to look what you're getting into. Nice and easy, nice and slow. That's it. Lift your feet and then stay all the way off. All the way off. Don't fall back. Ah! <laughs> stay there. Hold on to me. Yeah, give her a round of applause. Lift up. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I made it.